The Supreme Court has struck out suits by Lagos and Ikiti states challenging the legality of virtual court settings. In the suit, the Attorney General of Ikiti State, Olawale Fakbohunda, asked the court to determine whether the directive issued by the AGF to the heads of courts at federal and state levels as it relates to the conduct of virtual proceedings in court is not a violation of the provisions of the 1999 Constitution as amended. He also wanted the Apex Court to determine if the directive issued in line with the National Judicial Council is not a violation of the constitutional provisions on fair hearing as it relates to the conduct of criminal trials in public. But in a unanimous judgment, Justice Olabo de Rhodes Vivo declared that as at today, virtual court sittings are not unconstitutional. Live from Muyo, the Acquire Bomb State Capital, is legal practitioner Abbas Idiong joining us to make sense of all of this. Good to have you, Barista Idiong. Good morning, Nigeria. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Now, help us understand how necessary was the Supreme Court's uh, ruling on virtual court sitting in Nigeria? Well, it was, it was out of the concern by um, especially legal state that um, having provided practice directions by the National Judicial Council that judges and courts could sit on issues that could be overturned in the future if the Supreme Court was to rule that uh, virtual court sittings were unconstitutional. So the uh, attorneys general of uh, the southwestern states, uh, Ekiti state, Lagos state, and I believe on those states, approached the Supreme Court for an interpretation to determine whether virtual court sittings are actually constitutional or not. Um, but the Supreme Court has ruled as of yesterday that uh, for now, uh, virtual court sittings are not unconstitutional. Right. Barista, everyone is embracing the advantages of technology. You would agree to that due to COVID-19 pandemic. Now, what are some of the limitations to its use in the court process? Because there are some, you know, uh, who are raising concerns also. Absolutely. We've got uh, a myriad of challenges to the use of uh, virtual uh, technology. And I think that this debate, we should have had this debate a long time ago. Um, uh, the time for technology has, has come and it has come to stay. Um, and so our judiciary cannot be left behind. As it stands today, we have a problem of uh, training manpower. We have manpower challenges because we have very senior members of the judiciary and indeed the, the, the bar who are not conversant with the basic elements of technology. You're talking about uh, uh, the simple things like Microsoft package, PowerPoint presentation, Excel, and what have you. So we've got challenges with manpower. We've got challenges with infrastructure. We're talking about the internet, uh, reliability, especially in remote uh, regions of the country, and uh, we've got also issues of um, the, the hardware itself and the personnel to operate that hardware. We also have issues to do with evidence. How do you present evidence um, in criminal trial, um, where you've, the court, the judge has got to examine uh, perhaps the murder weapon and what have you. So those, these are challenges that face uh, the introduction of technology, but um, like someone said, we shouldn't use that as an excuse not to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because I was just going to add to that, that of what relevance is the withdrawal of the suit by the Lagos and Ekiti State Attorney Generals after the Apex Court ruled, uh, ruled described it as academic and speculative? Help us understand that too. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, it's, it's trite law. It's a basic component of our legal practice that um, the Supreme Court does not engage in speculation or academic uh, intellectual exercises. So before you can approach any court, uh, you must have a course of action. There must be a wrong that can be remedied by going to court. So in this case, there was no dispute that arose between the state's governments and the uh, federal government to warrant the Lagos State uh, Attorney General going to court for a determination one way or the other. So the Supreme Court basically said, look, we don't have a dispute before us. 
you have come here on a speculative endeavor and um, the Lagos State uh, Attorney General was very, very profound in redrawing his suit and acknowledging that uh, this was a speculative suit. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court was right to say that for now, uh, virtual sittings are not unconstitutional. Right. If I, if I take you back to some of the issues you raised earlier on, talking about manpower, uh, if we look at it critically, it's showing that there's a difference. There's something about a generation gap, if you want. So the younger lawyers or barristers would most likely uh, be more social media aware, whereas the others may not, as you have also explained there. Should we expect that moving forward, whether COVID or not COVID, we should have a system that is updated that will be able to stand whatever new situation or circumstance we find ourselves? Absolutely. That's desirable. Um, uh, and we, we can't shy away from the fact that um, right now the whole world has moved on and Nigeria is lagging behind uh, terribly. Um, going forward, we should hope to have a situation where you know, the, uh, the novel uh, coronavirus pandemic has exposed a lot of our deficiencies and a lot of gaps. Mm -hmm. And for the first time ever, uh, the courts were faced with a situation where it is possible that you could not have court sittings for the next two years. We should carry this in mind, take this on board, and adapt our laws and our rules of courts to reflect this new emerging reality. The brilliant thing is that uh, the National Assembly has been extremely proactive. There's a bill now being uh, read. It's being, it's being considered for an amendment to the Constitution to include um, all these emerging scenarios where we may need to have virtual sitting. So we are very proactive, and the courts hopefully will cooperate with us in this regard. Right. Thank you so very much, Barry Staidiong, for your time. And do keep safe out there. Thank you.